Another daily recap. Today is Wednesday, October 2, 2024. It's a few minutes before 8 a.m. Eastern. I'm going to try to save some time instead of introducing everything that I'm doing on this channel and talking about what this video is going to be like. Just look in the description below. I'm going to list everything out, what to expect. Here are the levels that we're going to trade against today, depending on what the market is doing. The dashed lines are zones going to the top and one toward the bottom, 564.36 and 563.84. The zone is just kind of a big fat level. The other level should be precise, depends on what the market's doing. They have kind of continued to fall a little bit or go sideways from that drop yesterday. So that kind of looks a little weak, but you know, they could rally. So every one of these levels should have some type of reaction um, to price. Price should have some type of reaction to these levels, I should say. Enough for base hit. Uh, no guarantees, of course, but uh, it also helps to see what's going on in the market. In other time frames, other indicators, that's what I use to uh, validate these levels, but these are this is our baseline. So we'll come back to this chart after the market closes to take a look at any trades that may have resulted from SPY hitting these levels. And the trades, of course, are in the E-mini futures. Catch you on the other side. It is now 8.05 p.m. Now that the market has closed, what can we say about the levels that we identified this morning? You can see that the SPY hit two of our levels. As usual, I'll run through how you would have traded them per the rules of the strategy I've developed, and then I'll show you the actual trades that I took. I usually like to wait until after 15 minutes of the opening bell before entering any trades. This is one of the rules. So this morning, you would have not done anything when the SPY came down into this level at 565.91 the first time. After the 15 minute mark, you would have made the decision if you were willing to trade this level for a short trade since price was under this level at that point in time. Here's the 945 candle right here. So in keeping with all the other trades that are logged in the log that I call playing by the rules log, we're going to assume that you shorted 565.91. And as you can see, that was the wrong play at this time. You would have incurred 11 and a half point fumble before reversing the position. There is a signal that I look for for when a trade is out of the money like this. That signal happened when the E-minis were 11.5 points in the red, 11 and a half points. And reversing to that point gave you a pretty quick base hit of four ES points or more if you were willing to hold on for more points. The next trade up at 568.62 was for a short position. That trade worked as designed for another quick base hit of four ES points. They pulled back more than four points, but the typical base hit in this strategy is four S&P points. Now you have the option to take what I call a recycle trade. It's when a level that has been traded one way and now price is on the other side of that level and come back into it from the other side. The first successful trade at this level was on the short side. So now about two hours later, they're coming back into it on the other side and you have an option to trade it again for a long position. So would you have entered a long trade here at the same level if the SPY hit it again, if they were going to come back and hit this again? The answer is no. And the reason is because price consolidated above this level a certain way that violates another rule that I have. In this case, they came within 20 cents of the level for 20 minutes or more. And usually that kind of consolidation means price probably won't react at the level the way you want it to if they get down there and hit it. It might, but the more likely scenario is that that consolidation was gearing up to push price lower. You want price to come into a level purposefully and meaningfully and intentionally when it comes straight into a level on increasing volume, that's a good sign. In the case of this potential recycle trade, none of that happened. It was a classic consolidation that broke a rule, and therefore you would have canceled any orders that were ready to be activated at that level. After that, there were no other trades to be had. No other levels hit, and now that 568.62 have been traded, it's best to leave it alone for the rest of the day. Price reactions are less likely and less predictable as time goes on. So those were the playing by the rules trades. And here's the one trade I took today. You can see the time, 9.31. I'll start playing this. And I don't think it's too fast. I don't have it sped up too much for you to see me put an order in here at 565.96. I adjusted this five cents toward price. I like to do this on most trades. And I decided to go ahead and trade this on the long side no matter what time they got to it because I just had, I saw some reasons below this level that there were some safety nets and I had this zone down here. And honestly, if they got down below it, I wasn't willing to take a short trade. I know this is a level from the morning, but you don't have to trade every single level. P per the rules, as we just saw, you would have got on the wrong side of this and taken a short trade and lost money. But I took a long trade, you know, trader's choice. So I bought two at the level. The moment the SPY hit it, 
I entered an E-mini trade, it was activated automatically for two positions or two contracts. And I thought I'd just take it all off at a base hit of five points, but I changed my mind the very last minute or so and just took one off and um, sold one. There we go, one, so $250, and put a like a six-point trailer. And that worked out pretty good because I got above what I would have made if I just took the entire thing off. And it pulled me up, and uh, I think it was four. So I've got a target up here. They never got there, but you know I was willing to ride this thing up if that six-point trailer was enough to withstand any, you know, the inevitable pullbacks. But that didn't happen. So anyway, uh, a decent amount of points on the remaining contract. And then I chose not to take the trade at five sixty-eight sixty-two. I just honestly wasn't feeling it. I had other reasons. It turned out to be the wrong decision, as you can see that you know we you know it worked. So you'll see this level go dotted. That's my indication, just like this one down here that the level's been done, or the level's been traded, and I'm not going to mess with it again. And that happens as they're coming up into this level. There we go. That's just my indication that I don't want to mess with the level. And as you can see, I didn't do any trades, and it was kind of my mistake. It worked out pretty well. That was a nice, easy trade right there. That would have been it. But as you know, playing by the rules, that would have been perfectly valid. And then I don't know if he even had the same recording when they came back down into it. Possibly if I didn't stop this recording in time, paying attention to what they're doing. This is starting that consolidation here. And I didn't take the trade. I stopped recording about this. So I actually had, this is when I stopped and I was actually on the road for about an hour or so. Got back, recorded the rest of the day. But as you know, nothing happened for the rest of the day. Here's another look at the two levels that were hit and how they would have been traded. I mean, it's clear to see now that this was a an area of support and being long was correct, but playing by the rules, you would have gone short and that was the wrong play in this case. But we talked about that. We talked about everything else. So two trades uh, by the rules and end of the day in the red slightly. And we can take a look at the log in a minute, but first let's look at the daily chart. So is there anything that we can determine from this daily chart? Well, based on what the IWM was doing the other day and last week, it's not too surprising that the SPY followed suit and came down because the IWM was weak or at least they gave a signal of a trend change. Maybe we can look at that in a minute, but they've been developing this kind of range. It's kind of sloppy in a way, um, but it's not too surprising. They've been just going back and forth and they closed, I think slightly above where they closed today. They closed slightly above where they closed yesterday. So the close yesterday was 568.62. The close today was 568.87 or 86. So right above the close, not sure what that means at this point, but I just call this it's in a range. I did mention that there's going to be some support down here where they hit it today. That was part of my safety net. Part The top part of this support, this kind of breakout area here that we talked about in last night's video. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, just check out the video. Maybe I'll put a link somewhere up here. And you can talk up and you can see what I'm talking about where this is a, what I would call a breakout area when they get above it and come back down. It's usually going to provide some type of support. There's a re certain retracement. There's a lot of things happening. But this is essentially a range. So nothing conclusive just yet. Another quick look at the IWM way back here on this tail candle on good volume on whatever date this was, September 18th. That's a signal of a trend change. Timing's right. Signal's right. Kind of weird the way they are kind of sloppy the way they did this because they opened in the pre-market above this. I shorted this pretty good on the RTY futures uh, that next day. But it's not surprising they've been coming down. So they've closed below the low of this. It's still, is, it's still on the table for them to pull back more, but it's just doing it in a kind of a... Uh, stubborn way, if you will. So once again, not very conclusive, but it wouldn't be too surprising if the SPY comes down farther, but they're just constraining themselves in a range. So it's hard to say at this point what they might do in the next day or so. So we can just leave it at that and go to the tracking log. There are two logs. The PBR or the playing by the rules log is every single level in this is treated exactly the same way. And we just talked about what happened. Fumble at the first level, base it on the other level, not a recycle on the flip side of that level because of the consolidation. So you would have given 11 and a half points back, but you would have gained eight and ended a little under water. My trades over here on the Sam's trades output. So this are, these are my trades, essentially one trade, but uh, end up getting the equivalent. The net points were 7.37 because my two contract position netted me 737, uh, 50 or 75, basically 737, just rounded this to an even, rounded this to whole numbers here. Um, and just chose not to trade the level at the gap from, that's what this level was, essentially the gap from the previous day. And it worked, as it turned out, it worked pretty well, but just wasn't feeling it at the time. But those were the trades, and uh, that's 
all I've got today. So thanks for tuning in to today's recap. And tomorrow morning, I'll come back at it with new levels, the game plan. Thanks for your support. Consider subscribing if you found value and learned something in this so you can get future videos and future recaps every single day. We're trading these levels, providing a recap of what happened. Catch you in the next video. Have a great rest of your day.